So guys, I am back with another Lords of the Fallen video and today guys, I bring you the complete patch notes on the latest update of version 1.1.326. Let's go. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so this is a quite hefty uh, patch and the notes are quite hefty too. So let's just get straight into it guys. Greetings lamp bearers, we'd like to share with you the next big optimization update which also marks the start of our ongoing PvP slash PvE balancing split as well as the much requested improvements to the lock on system and boss difficulty increases. This week's highlights include Okay, so we successfully completed a custom engine improvement to allow us to nanite for all umbral meshes, which should mean a noticeable improvement on performance while in umbral. For the brave few who will hang around long enough to notice, this is in addition to our usual overall performance improvements in several areas of the game. Specified below in the notes, a new lock on system activated. We've been extensively testing different options and believe the simpler approach of locking on to the center of the screen is the most effective one. We've also made this new default setting, though you still have the ability to switch to other lock on options in settings, including Legacy, the previous default. The first step of our PvP slash PvE balancing split is here with much more to come in the near future. We can now start independently balancing spells. So today's update focuses on the most overpowered spells and ranged abilities based on feedback and what's basically in-house testing. For PvP only, this has zero impact on PvE. Okay, so by popular demand, we finalized a complete overhaul to all bosses in the game. It was clear both from your feedback and from internal findings that many bosses simply weren't posing enough of a challenge. So we've rebalanced some behaviors as well as their hit points and damage output to ensure they pose the correct level of difficulty at a point in your journey. Please find further details down below, which we will get into people. We have integrated the latest version of the LSS3, meaning you can now manually activate the most recent frame generation update by using a special command. Once we confirm through Sentry that this uh, new FG is stable, we'll activate it for everybody with 40 series by default. Furthermore, in collaboration with Nvidia and AMD, we've activated additional data for Sentry reports to gather more details on the remaining hardware that is unfortunately still experiencing some crushes in our game. This will help us pinpoint the issues both quicker and more accurately and enable our partners to update the GPU drivers accordingly. As previously mentioned, we continue to work on all the three content uh, we've revealed in the last week's content roadmap and can exclusively reveal that you won't have to wait long until the first content drop. And with that, let's dive into the patch notes. Lock on overhaul. So yes, we know about the new lock on system activated, but there's a few more details here. And these are in regards to the settings and different options you'll be able to choose. Precision. This prioritizes enemies that are closer to the center of your screen within a specified maximum limit. Enemies on the borders are ignored. Dynamic. This prioritizes enemies that are closer to the center of your screen without limits. This is the default option. Proximity prioritizes enemies that are the nearest to the player. And Legacy represents the original lock on system from the game's launch. Pretty cool. Okay, so on to endings. For those players who got blocked at the Umbral ending, unable to finish the game, we have great news. Now when you load the character that should have received the ending, you will see the credits directly, receive their proper achievements, the proper rewards, and then get the prompt to move to New Game Plus One or New Game Plus Zero, or stay in the current world. This will also fix a potential or not reported issue with the Rogar ending, should it ever occur. Thanks for the players for sharing their saves. Uh, this has greatly helped us find the issue and the safe way to fix it. Okay, so on to stability. We've updated NVIDIA's DLSS3 Streamline, but we have not activated frame generation by default yet. We'll do so once we secure its stability. To enable it, you can use this command you can see on screen now, guys, in Steam. And this will activate the frame generation option in your graphics settings if you are using a 40 series. 
In collaboration with Epic, we fixed an engine loading deadlock that can happen when using low profile CPUs. Thanks, man, for helping us profile this on his PC. We've noticed that some players were using the OF4 during the ending cinematic, especially the Umbra one, possibly out of concern about not having their way back. We've added an additional fail safety support and Alt F4 exit here. However, please keep in mind that you can still choose whether to continue or exit the game after the cinematic, so there's no need to exit the game prematurely. This also covers any potential crash that could happen in that moment or power outage. We've enabled additional data collection for sentry reports to gather more details about crashes occurring on specific hardware. This will help us pinpoint driver issues more accurately for Nvidia and AMD. We've added a warning when starting the game with a uh, Reva Tuner activated. We've observed through Sentry that overclocking GPUs and CPUs remains as one of the primary causes of crashes. Okay, so now on to performance, guys. We've made an engine improvement to allow us to use Nanite for Umbral meshes. This should result in a noticeable performance improvement while in Umbral. For those who are curious, Umbral meshes require a complex shader that uses alpha masks, camera occlusion, animation support, vertex animated options, pixel depth offset, and world position offset. None of these were supported by Nanite meshes before. Now, once the full transition to Umbral is complete, we can take advantage of Nanite technology by selectively swapping meshes depending on their shader needs. We've implemented a significant optimization for the dread spawning mechanisms, ensuring that being in Umbral should no longer cause performance drops, even when surrounded by Umbral zombies. Optimization of Umbral levels, Castle's Dungeon, improved the deletion of some hidden meshes, reduced the number of actors casting shadows in the Skyros Bridge Ramparts, reduced the number of actors casting shadows in the Lower Kairos Alehouse, reduced the number of actors casting shadows in the Tower of Penance, as well as in the Path to the Mance. Collision optimization was performed in Lower Kairos Bridge area, reduced the number of actors casting shadows in Skyros Frame area, Reduced the number of actors casting shadows in the Red Corpse Village. Performed a casting shadow pass in Upper Calvus Minor District. Optimization of Umbra levels in Lower Calvus. Improved deleting hidden meshes and preventing camera occlusion in meshes far away from the player. Reduced the number of actors casting shadows in Lower Calvus Upper Gate. Reduced the number of actors casting shadows and removed foliage painted in the landscape that was far from the player and not visible in the Red Corpse Forest. In the manse of the hallowed sentinels, we've conducted a second pass to reduce the number of actors casting shadows, focusing on small things and details. Reduce the number of actors casting shadows in the lower Calvus Bridge area. Reduce the number of actors casting shadows in the upper Calvus Noble District. Optimization of Umbra levels in Skyrest Bridge involved deleting hidden meshes and preventing camera occlusion in meshes far away from the player. Global collision optimization, bug fixes, and improvements were made across the fifth of the chill curse. Umbral optimization in Piatis Arena and Skyrest Bridge involved deleting hidden meshes and preventing camera occlusion in some meshes. Reduce the number of actors casting shadows in lower car of Smalter area. Further reduction in actors casting shadows, added extra occluders, and deleted actors inside behind walls at Skyrest Bridge frame. These were in passageways, big towers, under bridge, top bridge, etc, etc. So they say. Okay, so now on to bosses, people. Okay, so all non-main bosses have received a health boost ranging from 10% to 20%, depending on the player's game progression. Less of a boost at the start of the game and a higher boost towards the end. All non-main bosses have received an overall 10% boost to their damage output with adjustments made on a case-by-case -case basis to ensure they provide the appropriate level of challenge. The Unbroken Promise has received a significant health increase of 18% and a 15% boost in damage output following the behaviour enhancement introduced two weeks ago. We noticed that some players were engaging with it and we felt it needed additional health and damage to match its improved, more aggressive behaviour. The Light Reaper now has slightly more health with a 10% increase to make the final part of the combat more engaging. We've observed that players were having fun, but the encounter was a bit too short. 
Following the behaviour enhancements of the Sunless Monarch, we found that we were very close to achieving the desired level of difficulty. However, we decided to add a little more health of 8% and increase the damage of its attacks by 10% to truly provide the challenge we intended after last week's overhaul behavioural improvement. The sacred resonance will now typically use the stairs to descend and will only drop through the hole if there's an opportunity to strike the player. Okay, so now onto AI. Added and adjusted leashing volumes in revelation depths, improved leashing volumes in the system. The AI could get stuck due to collisions after using a nav link. The collisions were improved to create a straight angle in the sunless scheme. The abiding defenders could get on top of the chest in the manse area. A blocking volume with block only pawn has been placed there. This still allows the player to open the chest and obtain the loot. Nav mesh has been added to the moving platforms to prevent potential cheesing of the Scarlet Shadow in one of Pilgrim's Perch's moving platforms. Wow, adjusted leashing volumes in a manse to allow hounds to pursue players a bit further away than other enemy types. Nav mesh improvements have been made in some spots in the Forsaken Fen and a general nav mesh pass has been performed. Adjusted arch slash door size in Bramish Castle and made some combat space improvements to help with the fight against the Ruiner. Now it's harder to hide from him. We love cheese but cheesing with moderation. Okay so now on to Umbro. The player was able to soul flare the platform they were standing on under certain conditions. This has now been fixed. Okay, so that's that for Umbro. Balancing and PvE. Fixed an issue with their Light Reaper Sword special attack. Now it's reactivated and can be used as intended. Players still have to complete the quest line in order to unlock them. We are more lenient now when sprinting. So after a roll, you do not need to press sprint again. Your sprint keeps going if you have enough stamina left, of course. Fix an issue with player a similar crim spell could shoot through the floor and walls. Fix an issue with the Vigor multiplier runes that could result in unexpected damage output. The pump skin helmet is now droppable and sellable. We are not sure why anyone would want to do this. Objectively, makes no sense, but now you can decide to do it anyway. Buff the exploding bolt decreasing its ammo cost from 10 to 4 and its damage multiplier boosted from a 1.9 to a 3.8, quite a decent buffer. Buff the shattering bolt by decreasing its ammo cost from 10 to 4, and its holy damage multiplier increased by my 1.9 to a 3.8. Dark Abyss banner has received probably the biggest buff of all. Ammo cost reduction from a 15 to a 4, physical damage multiplier increased from a 0.5 to a 1, physical burst damage from a 2 to a 4, and its fire damage multiplier from a 1.5 to a three wow that's basically double as good as it was craziness we've discovered a bug in which hollow triptych would make all holy damage sources delivering unintended additional staggered damage for example from 10 intended staggered damage would be delivering 11 or even 13 in some cases this is being corrected as now the bug is corrected we can increase the hollow triptych stagger by plus 10 balancing pvp the first step of our PvP slash PvE split is here, yet not finished. This one is a proper PvP scaler for spells and arrows slash bolts for PvP. Zero impact on PvE, just a pure PvP specific scaler for those. Now, using spells, ammo and throwables in PvP shouldn't be OP, but yet they seemingly were. Okay, so multiplayer. We've seen quite a few questions on how passwords work for multiplayer, so we've decided to add a visual HUD indicator when password is on. For co-op, will always remain there until you manually delete the password. For PvP, now it fades away after 2 minutes, so you can understand that you'll be matchmaked uh, for PvP with anybody from that point on, not just with people with passwords. Added additional information when disconnecting for multiplayer sessions. Okay, so on screen now guys, you can see the list of collision fixes, buffs and changes and things like this. And then guys, you'll see lighting, visuals, UI and then audio guys. If you want to pause the video and read through these, I mean they're important changes in my opinion to read through all of them. But again, if you want to pause the video and read through them, be my guest. 
But there we have it, guys. This is live on all platforms as of right now. It's updated version 1.1.326. And there we have it, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.